Hi, my name is Amy Gao, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of California, San Francisco. Today, I'm going to be talking with you about business concepts for life scientists. So as it turns out, um, figuring out finance in academia is not that different from in biotechnology. Um, it just has a lot fewer sort of complicated financial models. So you have already heard from Jashan about revenue and costs and what an enterprise needs to earn um, to cover its costs. You've also heard about forecasting, estimating the funding of an enterprise. In terms of parallels to academia, here's some questions that we might consider. So how is your lab like a small business? I realized early on that running my lab really was like running a small business. And that is in the sense that I had to figure out how much I was bringing in revenue from grants and uh, from federal sources, from private foundations, um, from co con consultation, um, and then figuring out what my costs were, which the majority of costs really are in personnel. And additional costs come from equipment or lab reagents. And I figured out pretty early that I needed to make sure that the revenue and the costs balanced. So in that sense, um, how is my lab budget like a cash flow statement? Well, I actually um, keep an Excel spreadsheet where I know how much cash I have in hand from every source. And I also know um, what I'm spending my money on. So I know per month how much I'm spending on personnel, on average how much I spend for reagents, and if there are any big ticket items, that gets included into my Excel spreadsheet. And I check the spreadsheet um, at least every two months. Um, in sort of rough times, I'll check it um, even every month. So do I think about burn rate? I think about burn rate a lot. Um, I know at any point in time how much I have in each, um, from each grant, how much I'm spending, and um, uh, how much I can project will be coming in. And this is very helpful because knowing my burn rate helps me predict how much money I'll have on hand in the future and allows me to determine when I need to be writing more grants or, um, or if I'm able to hire. So you also heard from Christine about the cost of capital and what's required in terms of return to make an investment. And um, we actually think about this in academics as well. So some other questions that we might consider in this regard are, what are examples of opportunity costs in the lab? So um, I had an example of trying to figure out an opportunity cost not too long ago. So we have induced pluripotent stem cells in the lab that we were hoping to edit with CRISPR-Cas technology. And this is a little bit more challenging in stem cells than it is in other cell lines. We didn't know this going in, though, so we tried a few times, and it didn't work. So then I started to wonder, should we be outsourcing this to a company? And we knew how much they would charge for it. And so what I did was I asked somebody in the lab to come up with um, sort of a budget for doing this in our lab. As it turned out, if we added up time and reagents, um, the amount we would spend doing this in our lab was exactly the same as what we would pay uh, a company to do. And that was a very useful exercise in terms of figuring out the opportunity costs for um, this project. In terms of deciding which projects to invest in, um, there are a lot of things go into this. I think um, sometimes it has to do with the projects that are um, attractive to fa funding agencies. It also obviously has a lot to do with what we're interested in and what we think will have the greatest impact on sort of the knowledge base and, and health in the world. Um, in addition, sometimes this depends on um, the folks we have in the lab and the expertise we have in the lab um, or collaborators that we could find. In terms of my near and long-term financial strategies, I've already told you that I do um, keep an eye on the budget. I have an Excel spreadsheet that I use um, a lot. It gets a, it gets a lot of work. Um, and in addition to that, we actually have a lot of help from the finance office. So we call them our post-award people. They can help me determine how much I'm spending on a given month. They can um, provide projections for when a grant is going to run out. And they can also provide uh, me um, very exact numbers on, about cash on hand. And so with their help, I like to um, keep an eye on the spreadsheet with projections out. Um, I actually project out to about five years. And I like to know that I have enough cash on hand in order to run the lab for about two years. If I can see that I'm not going to be able to achieve that, then I know it's time to um, write more grants. OK, well, thank you very much for your time.